Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel and another color challenge video. Today we'll be repainting a doll using all my orange art supplies. And as you can tell, orange is not a color that I use particularly much because I don't really have much of it. I guess I just tend to mix orange whenever I need it rather than invest in a lot of orange art supplies. So we only have a bit to work with, but we'll do what we can. And here's a little swatch test. And as you can see, all the shades are pretty close together. And I only had one type of paint, which was like very, very middle tone, almost not that dark. So the darkest I had would actually be one of the pencils. So that would be a challenge because it's just hard to get definition that way. For glitters, I didn't even have any fine glitter in orange. I only had some hexagons and some diamond shapes. And when with the rhinestones, I really only had these very small ones in orange and some pearl bows and flowers. I also included some acrylic yarn, which I tend to brush out and use for doll hair. And then the only accessory I'll be using that isn't orange is white, a bit of white acrylic paint and white pencil. And this is just to add the whites of the eyes and highlights, just to, you know, get a bit of contrast. I will not be mixing white into the other shades. I'll only be working with the shades I've got. For the base of this project, I'll be using this secondhand Monster High doll. I can't remember what she's called. She has a bit of shimmer to her skin, pointed ears, and used to have wings, I think. So we'll be using this one, and I already cleaned and prepped it because I needed to see the staining it has on its face to see if we could work with it or not, but it wasn't too bad. So after priming it with the Mr. Super Clear spray, I got to work. I decided to go for a sort of sweet look, so I rounded out the sculpt of the doll's eyes just a little bit so they were rounded at the edges rather than being almond shaped and because the doll had pointy ears i was kind of thinking you know what could i do with that so i was going in the direction either a sort of pixie or an elf and in the end i went for going more like a very sweet looking elf because i know she was going to have red hair so i also decided to give her freckles just because i thought it would be cute at first i thought maybe i should do something like you no, know, inspired by Merida from Brave, because that would be fitting, but I decided to go in a bit of a different direction instead. Since I had so few shades to work with, I really tried to work within, you know, the different opacity and also finishes. So the darker pencil I used both dry but also wet, you know, on a brush using the watercolor effect to really get some opacity and also use the watercolor effect to blend it into other colors. And I ended up using the Mica powder I have, which is shimmery, to do a big portion of the eye. And the way I apply it is I always do a colored base with colored pencils or paint. And then I just mix a tiny bit of water from a brush into the powder and sort of dab it on. And then when, you know, the water dries, it leaves only the powder, which had this really shimmery, almost metallic effect and just gives a different finish so it defines it a little more. You do have to be careful with stuff like that and be sure that you seal it in properly because if you end up wiping your finger or a brush or pencil on top of that powder without having sealed it first, it can spread everywhere, which I've learned on a previous doll the hard way. So be sure to seal it in when you use mica powder. I was also trying to mix up the facial expression just a tiny bit because I tend to make all my dolls looking straight forward, very wide eyes or slightly squinting. So I thought I'd try to do something else. So I tried to have her one eyebrow lifted a tiny bit and that eye stretch just a little. So it would be kind of a, you know, lifted eyebrow side smile, but I'm not really sure if it came across or just looked crooked, but I tried. I also added a bit of the mica powder over like the base of her nose and a bit of her cheeks where I had already layered some chalk pastel for a little bit of blush and I was just by the freckles and I don't know why I just thought it would be nice with a bit of shimmer to the center of the face and I used a slightly more yellowish orange of my pastels to shade slash blush the rest of the face also making sure to get a bit of the point of the ears and stuff like that because I wanted them to be visible and this just brings a little more life to the face. Mm -hmm. 
For the places that I want it to be darkest, for just the eyelashes, I used the watercolor effect of the darkest pencil, really trying to build up the color as much as possible to get as much payoff as possible, just to get, you know, the range. But I felt it was a little difficult and this would be an instant where, where I would really have liked to have black just to make the eyelashes stand out. But then again, if she's red, you know, have red hair, it does make sense to have red eyelashes. So it's not that I don't like the look. It's just because the eyes were also orange and the lips and everything. So it kind of blended together a little bit. And I did think this one was pretty hard to make stand out. But I do like the look of her. I think she looked out, you know, turned out very cute. For some harsh highlights on the face, I watered down a bit of white acrylic paint and that's just to bring some of the features out a little bit so it's not just, you know, so flat. The last layer where you add the final details is usually what really makes everything pop, for instance the highlights of the eyes. Once I was done with the face, I gave it a final seal and put it aside to dry so I could work on the hair. I used the acrylic yarn and brushed it out like I usually do, but once I didn't actually straighten it, I left it fluffy with as much volume as possible and then I braided or twisted the different strands together and glued them onto the doll's head like that. And this just gave this nice, I don't know, tribal look? I don't know, it was kind of wild because I, th I was thinking maybe she was a forest elf or something. So I really like the look of it, so I just arranged them to cover all of the scalp. To make the front hairline look neat, I glued on two tiny braids to be almost like, you know, tiny cornrows or Dutch braids. Now onto the glitter, I took one of the diamond glitters and cut in half so I could glue each half on each side of the eyebrow to look kind of like a piercing. And then I used the pearls and hexagon glitters and also a rhinestone in the ears for decoration. And as much as I love pouring glitter all over everything and covering in rhinestones, I just didn't feel that it really matched the look of the stall to have too much everywhere, so therefore I kept it to the ears. After that was all in place, I glazed the eyes, which really brings out the shimmer of the mica powder and just makes it look awesome. And then she's done. So here she is. Despite the difficulties I had with the face, I'm actually really happy with her and I actually like the final look. I think she turned out really nice. I really hope you guys are still enjoying this challenge. 
And hey, we're almost at the end of the rainbow. We've almost done all of the colors in a very strangely ordered rainbow, as someone in the comments pointed out to me. But yeah, I went by request, so I haven't done everything in the proper order. But next and final color in the row will be yellow, so stay tuned for that. If you guys have any other ideas for videos or challenges you'd like to see, be sure to let me know in the comments below, because I love hearing from you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the new one real soon, bye!